In this video, we're going to see what the Federal Reserve is doing with the quantitative tightening. I've updated till the month of January, and in this video, let's look at what the Fed has done for the month of February and March. If you're here for the first time in this channel, we're covering the Fed's quantitative tightening updates along with the other economic updates. The Federal Reserve and its efforts to curb inflation is continuing with raising interest rates and shrinking its balance sheet, which is nothing but the quantitative tightening. These are the two important terms you need to know. When the Fed prints money into our economic system, it's called quantitative easing. When the Fed removes money from the economy, it's called quantitative tightening. The Fed updates the information on a weekly basis, and I'm going to show what the Fed did for the last couple of months. This data can be accessed publicly on the Federal Reserve's website, and if you want to know about the previous month's data, you can check out my other videos on quantitative tightening. I'll drop the link of those videos in the description below. For the first week of February, the Fed removed $38 billion. For the second week of February, the Fed added $7.9 billion. It's been a while since the Fed added money into our economy. Let's move on to next week. During the third week of February, the Fed removed $33 billion, and during the fourth week of February, the Fed removed $3.2 billion. So for the month of February, the Fed has removed a total of $66.3 billion. That's a lot compared to the previous few months. Let's look at the month of March. During the first week of March, on March 1st, the Fed removed $38.1 billion. During the second week, March 8th, the Fed removed $1 billion. During the third week of March the 15th, the Fed removed $9.1 billion. And the fourth week, on March 22nd, the Fed removed $4.3 billion. And on March 29th, the Fed removed $11.2 billion. So for the month of March, the Fed removed a total of $63.7 billion. For the month of February and March combined, the Fed has removed a total of $130 billion. So the Fed's ramping up the quantitative tightening. Along with the tightening, we all know the Fed's raising interest rates. The Fed raised it 0.25% during the last FOMC meeting and is expected to raise another 25 points again during the next FOMC meeting. We'll be discussing the impact of the Federal Reserve's decision on interest rates, specifically the peak interest rates, and how it'll affect the economy, whether or not there will be a recession. Let's start with the fact that the Federal Reserve has recently increased the Fed's funds rate by 0.25%, bringing it to 5%, which is a significant increase from the previous rate of 0 to 0.25%. The reason for this increase is to combat inflation. By raising interest rates, the Fed intends to slow down economic growth, which will reduce demand and ultimately lower inflation. According to the Fed's updated economic projections, they expect the peak interest rates to reach 5.25%. I'd like to explain the outcome of a scenario involving Jerome Powell. During his testimony before Congress, the market predicted that the Federal Reserve would increase interest rates by 0.5%, with a probability as high as 80%. At that time, the market anticipated that interest rates would eventually need to rise to 5.75%. Nevertheless, following the recent banking collapses, the market's perspective shifted dramatically and rapidly. The market no longer believes that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates to 5.75% because higher interest rates have created a more difficult environment for the banking industry. To put it simply, banks have become accustomed to a 0% interest rate environment where money is cheap and almost free. During this period, they didn't have to pay depositors any interest to retain their business and keep their money in their accounts. Let's consider the current interest rates for savings accounts and CDs. Banks can no longer maintain a 0% interest rate to keep customers' money in their accounts. Otherwise, people could withdraw their money and invest it in short-term debt instruments, which offer a significant amount of interest income. Additionally, if banks want to borrow money, it's become more expensive as the cost of capital has increased significantly. Therefore, banks can no longer rely on cheap and easily accessible money as it was in the past. Looking at the impact of rising interest rates on the economy, we won't have official data until April 27th when the GDP reports are released. Nevertheless, it's expected that the GDP growth rate will decrease, and whether it'll turn negative in the future, whether it'll happen in this quarter or in the coming quarters, is still uncertain due to varying opinions. Some people believe in a soft landing, some think it'll be a crash landing, and others think there will be no landing at all. However, considering the higher interest rate environment and the lag effect, a slowdown in the economy is anticipated, 
The exact extent of the impact remains to be seen, and we'll have to wait until the next GDP report to have a better understanding. All of this is interconnected and closely related to unemployment. The Federal Reserve has consistently highlighted that the tight labor market is contributing to wage inflation, which they're concerned about. However, with the current higher interest rate environment, it's anticipated that unemployment will increase. In February, we already saw a rise in the unemployment rates from 3.4% in January to 3.6%. The Federal Reserve has emphasized that there will be a softening in the labor markets and unemployment is predicted to reach around 4% this year. It's not anticipated to exceed the 5% threshold. Nevertheless, if we do enter that projected range, it'd imply that 2 million Americans will lose their jobs this year. Regarding the housing market, it's expected that mortgage interest rates will remain at elevated levels. Currently, the 30-year fixed rate has been hovering around 6 to 7%. It's anticipated that we'll not return to the 3% mortgage rates of the past, at least not anytime soon, However, relief is expected in the last few months of 2023. As for the stock market, I'll delve deeper into that topic in an upcoming video. In that video, I'll discuss peak interest rates, the Fed pivot, the timing of the Fed pivot, quantitative tightening and quantitative easing, unemployment, GDP, recession, inflation, and more. So please stay tuned for my analysis in that video. The economy's suffering, especially in sectors sensitive to interest rates such as housing and banking. However, the Federal Reserve had to raise interest rates to maintain their credibility and signal their commitment to fighting inflation, which is still at 6%. Although some politicians are critical of the Fed's decisions, their top priority is to combat inflation, even if their effectiveness is questionable. Senator Elizabeth Warren has criticized the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates, stating that she believes the rate increases are extreme and unnecessary. She accuses Jerome Powell of failing in his responsibilities as an overseer of banks and inflation by prioritizing fighting inflation over employment. Warren argues that other factors such as price gouging, supply chain problems, and the war in Ukraine are also responsible for inflation and that rising interest rates will not solve those problems but only result in job losses. While there's some truth to what Warren says, it's worth noting that the larger issue is the trillions of dollars printed by the Federal Reserve. Quantitative easing was a separate measure from the current interest rate discussion. The expectation is that the Federal Reserve will address the consequences of quantitative easing through quantitative tightening, which will continue until 2024. However, it should be noted that there's now a phenomenon of backdoor quantitative easing, which goes against the principle of quantitative tightening. This refers to the bank rescues, bailouts, and the new lending facilities that are being introduced, and I believe these are just the beginning of a new wave of programs and measures. The current higher interest rate scenario is impacting the economy negatively, resulting in below average growth, which is causing concern for many, including Senator Warren. Additionally, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers believes that the Federal Reserve needs to continue raising interest rates to combat inflation. Summers believes that the issues in the banking sector are not significant enough to warrant a pause in the interest rate hikes, and the Fed must maintain an aggressive approach to keep inflation expectations under control. Regardless of the Federal Reserve's future decisions, they'll face criticism from both sides. I presented both arguments, and I'm not defending the Federal Reserve. I'm not a fan of the Federal Reserve, and I believe they went too far with quantitative easing. In my opinion, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates too late and seemed uncertain in their actions. Some argue that this may have been intentional, but I can see both sides of the argument. Regarding the current economic environment with higher interest rates, Goldman Sachs predicts a 35% chance of a recession in the next 12 months, up from their previous estimate at 25%. The stress in the banking sector, with several banks going under, has contributed to this increase. The best case scenario is that inflation comes down and interest rates stabilize without the need for further increases, allowing the Fed to pivot and start cutting rates. The worst case scenario is stagflation, where high inflation persists during a recession leading to a significant increase in unemployment and negative GDP growth. The Fed would likely choose to combat inflation rather than enter an economic depression, but if stagflation occurs, a reassessment may be necessary. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.